Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life's channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today I have a reply to some of your comments. I get this question all of the time here. And the question is, how do I connect with spirit? How do I do this? How do I, how do I channel? All right, so I'm gonna tell you kind of the basics behind the, um, the, w the ways of, I don't even know how to describe this. I, I don't even know how. So first, the first thing you need to know is that this is just normal to me. Spirit connection, spirit channeling, spirit contact. Totally normal for me. There's nothing spectacularly unique about it. It just is natural. It is normal. It's, it's like talking to my kids. It's like, it's not like, it's not any different for me than writing in my journal or texting on the phone or having a conversation with someone. It's just, and I reckon, but I recognize to the viewers, it seems like this super special, spectacular thing. And really, I guess I want the most important thing for you to know about spiritual contact and connection, the how to do it, is that you are a spirit. You need to understand that this is like a natural thing. You are a spirit. You have a spirit. It's part of who you are. You have a human body and you have a spirit energy that you are. You're made up of human stuff and you're made up of spirit stuff. So that spirit stuff, when I usually refer to that as like energy. And so because of that, that's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. You don't need to take a fancy class and study really hard and get a blessing from somebody on a mountain or travel to far off lands and study for three months and then you're all of a sudden gifted. That's not, that's not, you don't have to do that. If you want to do that, you can do that. If that's part of your journey and you need the experience, great. And there are lots of uh, teachers that, people that teach how to connect. And you know, if that's something that you need and that can help you, then go for it. But you use your discernment, but you're going to use your spirit to decide what's a fit for you when you're doing that. So just because you have a spirit, yes, you can connect. So I know you're gonna be like, okay, but I really need to know, tell me, I do this, this, and this. Well, let me, let me give you the background, okay? Cool your jets, little lady. Let me give you the background. You cannot drive the car without the driver's education classes, without the behind the wheel training, and without passing the multiple tests that you need to have in order to be able to do it, right? So you have to have a level of competency and just the understanding of this, all right? So first thing, don't be scared. There's no fear. Fear stuff is always the mind trying to keep you safe and protected. You don't need to be afraid or scared, okay? Unless you're a person that likes drama. If you like drama and you wanna learn through drama, then, you know, spirit connection really probably isn't for you because it is what? Simple and subtle. Oh yes, spirit communication is not Boom, in your face. Here's a spirit showing up for you right now. Pay attention. No, no, that does not happen. That happens in the movies. That doesn't happen in real life. It's very subtle and it's simple, so good news. You got a spirit, you're qualified. It's simple. Can you let yourself recognize in your mind that it's simple? It's not scary, it's not the movies, it's not dogma, it's not, um, demons or anything like that that's a common actually that's a common r r comment that i'll get like how do you know you're not channeling demons i'm like when you're watching a football game you can tell who the players are on the team that you're cheering for right like they have the certain colored jerseys you kind of know right you know and you know it's football and not hockey or basketball you know what sport right and you know what team right Okay, it's as simple as that. that. Not complicated. It's simple. You have a spirit and connection is simple. Now the, the, the other thing is it's subtle. So it's not in your face. You have to kind of be paying attention. And the first thing you need to do is learn how to pay attention to yourself. Do you even listen to yourself? Not your brain saying, oh, you can't do that. You're not her. You don't have those kind of skills. 
I don't know if I believe this. I'm not sure if I believe this. Okay, well then you're not gonna be able to do a spirit connection. And there ain't nothing I can do for you then. My job is not to make you believe in a higher power. You are. You are a higher power. <laughs> you are. You are. And whether or not you believe that, mm -mm -mm, that's gonna get you far in life or not so far in spirit connection. You have a spirit. Spirit communication is simple. It's not fear-based. It's not to be scared of. You know what team you're on. You can tell who the players are. Totally natural experience, right? <laughs> and it's subtle. It's subtle. It's gentle. It's reoccurring patterns. Have you heard the common thing where if you hear it three times, then you know it's a message from angels or your loved ones? Yeah, you've heard that, right? Well, it's because spirit contact and connection messages for you come in multiple ways. It could be through a music on the radio. It could be through a dream state. Dreams are great ways to connect. It's safe, easy, simple, uncomplicated because your mind isn't saying, well, I don't believe in that in your dream state. You're not going, I don't believe in this. Oh no, I don't believe in that. In our dream state, we're totally free from the mind putting fear, fear tactics in place to keep us really safe, right? All right, so spirit, simple, subtle. Those are three things I want you to remember, okay? So you can do it. You can make spirit connections if you choose to do that. But the most important thing is to be able to connect with your spirit first. Are you listening to your intuition? Are you? Can you even hear your inner voice? If you can't do that, how are you gonna hear stuff outside of you? Mmm, that's a good question, isn't it? That's a good question. So I will say that it is hard to hear your own voice at times because you're always talking to yourself. Your inner voice, your spirit is just chatting to you. Your intuition's giving you messages all the time and you just don't hear it because you've always heard it. It's like background noise. It becomes like people who live by Oh, like highways, freeways, that kind of hum of the sound of the freeway, the highway, just becomes like white noise, like just a humming natural environmental noise, right? Same thing with your spirit. So you, if you're gonna do anything to start with spirit connection, I would encourage you to learn about your own intuition. Use tools like meditation, tools like journaling or sacred writing. You know, writing your spirit connecting with the energy of your soul and understanding what energy even is. What is energy? If you take a yoga class, you can learn about energy. Meditation classes, you can learn about energy. There's so much that you can learn that will help you to connect with yourself. You are first and foremost. You are the priority, okay? So now let me tell you, kind of my model, my model, the way I see spiritual development, okay? So spiritual development. So if you really want to communicate with spirit, it's not a one and done kind of thing. Drive through, get your coffee and get out of here. It's not that. You want to sit, you want to hang out, you want to have an experience, okay? So if you are one of those people that you're into being open about spiritual development for yourself, like personal growth, like spiritual growth, then one of the things that you, I, I would encourage you, let me just explain kind of the three basic steps in this, this kind of how model how I see spiritual development. It's probably good for you to know that if you're watching Above Life Channel anyway, who is this Bridget lady that's this medium that talks to dead people? I'm also a coach, a personal motivator, and I do inspiring work with groups, retreats, and one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one sessions as well. So who, how, how is this personal development? What is this, or spiritual development, what does this look like? Well, for me, three primary steps, or three primary parts. First is external. So you have an experience, which you may have had here at Above Life Channel, right? Or you might have had a long time ago, after like your grandmother died, or an experience maybe at a friend's house, or that kind of a thing where you, kind of felt like you were maybe connecting with spirit or had a visitation. Some people use this word visitation. It sounds so serious to me, visitation. You may have had experience where you were in a state of awareness, of energy, which is how spirit can connect and communicate with us most easily. And 
you didn't have any barriers. There were no expectations, no resistance points. You were just open. Your heart was open and the easiest way to connect is through the heart. So external experiences are invitations to open up, to be curious. In this state, it's a great way to connect with, um, I would suggest starting with like angels, archangels, they're non-denominational. They do not have one particular religion or affiliation. But a lot of people who are used to, like if you grow up going to church and stuff, pe people tend to be more open to stepping into spiritual development through the realm of connecting with angels. And I do a ton of work with angels. And so if you've had sessions with me, you know that. And so that's a really great way to start, to start off. And that is very common, but you can also connect with other types of spiritual helpers that feel external to you, like deities, God, goddess aspects, depend on, depending upon what kind of cultural background you have or what a religion affiliation you grew up with, or maybe, be pre may, maybe you're practicing now, you might relate to deities like um, the Hindu God, goddess aspect, Ganesha, Ganesha, Lakshmi, Maybe White Terra, for example, one of the Buddhas, or um, maybe you connect with, oh, I see, I'm seeing them all. As soon as I say them, I'm kind of inviting them in, so I need to like slow that down just a little bit. You know who your deities, goddesses, saints, saints in the spirit world, in the spirit uh, business, they call, sometimes call that ascended masters. Woo, big words, whatever. It just means like a teacher, a spiritual teacher in the afterlife, you know, a St. Francis of Assisi type, or St. Catherine is one of mine, or St. Joan of Arc is one of mine also. So anyway, there you go. So external to you, like spirit guides, all right? Or it could also be like a family member, someone that you knew closely in the human life that you have an experience with through dream state, through um, feeling their presence or energy, or, or it, it just a whole host of different things, but it's external. The second part of that model of spiritual development that I work with is more, is more of an experience where you make it more internal, more I focused. So what is it about me that makes it so that I'm open to connecting? What is it about me, I, intuitive, inside, insightful, that allows me to recognize that there are more there are some times when I'm open and sometimes when I'm not? How can I be more intentional about that? And the best way to do that is to go in and ask, start to build a relationship, a conscious connection with yourself, your spirit. Your spirit is your guide, number one. Some people call this intuition. Some people call it your higher self. But you as a guide for yourself, getting to know yourself, going within, doing like things like meditation, yoga, um, journaling activities, those kinds of things can help you. Taking classes at this point, workshops, sitting in on a workshop, an informational workshop about a, an energy practice or modality can give you some, some, some tools to help you to connect because the, the language of your spirit is energy. And so too is the language then of the spirit, whether it has a body or doesn't. So if you really wanna connect with spirit outside of yourself or be a channel or channel, you've gotta understand how energy works for you. Again, so that you can connect with the intention. And it's all about I, you as an individual. And people connect in different ways. There are different types of channels that you can do. There's a whole host of things, but it's all about the inner. Okay, so the first part of the model is the external, the outer experiences. And then the second part is the inner, the inner, the really, usually when you're in spirit, a spiritual development process or you're on a journey, you really do get inside you go within and you really crave that connection that purest connection to yourself and you want to hear your voice and you want to turn up the volume on it and you want to know you want to know yourself as you were created as a divine spiritual being as a divine being of love and light and and beautiful empowering energy that's who you are and so you want to know that you want to know it and so then there's this internal focus on learning about intuition and learning about energy, okay? And then the third 
part of this model that I see as spiritual development, that third part is an integration, is a moment where you recognize that you've been, you've had so many of these experiences, external experiences with spirit guides and afterlife celebrities and loved ones and maybe yours or your friends and that kind of a thing where you've, you've had all these external experiences and then you've also had internal opportunity to get to know your spirit, to connect with your soul. Then finally, it is the integration of all of this of understanding energy, knowing enough about it. So you're never gonna stop learning about it, never, ever. Nobody's ever gonna know everything about it. But the learning about it, the process of learning about it is incredible. And then you integrate, you recognize in this, the third part of the model is that you're integrating all of these things. So you'll consistently pop back to the first part of the model where you're in a, uh, maybe you go to a workshop and they're channeling Archangel Michael, so you're all about that. Or maybe you go on a, a weekend with your friends and somebody has some cards and they're doing card deck thing and you're like all about it and you're like, hmm. And you can see patterns and you can see what the messages are and people are doing readings for each other and that kind of a thing. And then you pop back into your integrated self energy where you recognize that, oh, what's in this for me? If I'm sharing this message to somebody else, I'm seeing this in the cards. It's not just for her to benefit. It's from me. What's, what's the message for me? And then you connect in with that spiritual energy and it comes from inside of you. You are the teacher and the student and that's the integration. And you know that you have access to everything. And you also recognize at the integration level that you don't have all the answers. I, Bridget, does not have all the answers. Mm -mm. And so I hope that you will understand in me sharing this video about spiritual connection, like how do you connect? How do you do it for, your, do it for yourself? How do you do this? How do you do this, Bridget? Kind of a thing. Tell me how to do this because I want to do this. It's a process, you guys. It's a process and, and it's a journey. And I don't want you to be too hard on yourself and I don't want you to compare yourself to others and I don't want you to run out and buy somebody's program so you can quick learn. This is not drive through quality here. It's not fast food here. This is like sit down meal, enjoy it with your friends. The experience is the important part of the learning process. So I also want you to recognize that just because I'm sharing my perspectives, that I am only one perspective. I'm only one medium psychic coach lady talking to you. And it's a good idea for you to use your own discernment, your own judgment, and explore others' views and recognize that the most important viewpoint is your own your own. So my experiences are unique to me and I can share with you based upon my experiences. But for you, things may be different and different is just different and it's okay. It's just different. It's not right or wrong, good or bad. Different psychics work in different ways. Different channels work in different ways. Different mediums work in different ways. Different people have different life experiences. Even the same family, you're not the same as your sister. You're not the same as your dad. You don't work your job like your coworker works their job. We're unique individuals. So I encourage you, encourage you to have different kinds of experiences. You know, learn, open your mind up, but don't be too quick to adopt one way. Be open, make it your own, make it your own. Bring your, new, your own unique flair for connection into the mix. And that would be fabulous for all of us. So this is Bridget. Thank you so much for that question. I appreciate it. You've been watching Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope because this, it's your life. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for the great comments on the videos. I appreciate it very much.